The challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, the swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Dave Logan had gained notoriety as the leader of a ruthless gang in the Southwest. When the law finally picked up the gang's trail and trapped them in their hideout, Dave Logan had managed to escape and made his way to San Francisco. From there, he had gone to the Yukon Territory, where he soon established another gang. Once more, with reckless disregard for the law, Logan and his gang were operating. Dave was a large man and tougher than nails, but he was superstitious to such a degree that he believed a certain silver dollar which he had carried in his breast pocket one day and which had deflected a bullet was a luck charm. He always carried that silver dollar with a feeling that it made him invincible. He would lead his gang into a cafe, for instance, in broad daylight to hold up the customers. Reach, everybody, there's a hold up. All right, boys. Line them up, take their wallets and folks to jump. Leave it to us, Dave. You keep them coming. Get the guns first of all, Sam. Right. All right, Ali, you line up. Come on, make it right. Hey, are we going to let them get away with this? There's only five of them against all of us. Yeah, but they got the drop on us. That's a Logan gang. You better be careful. Right. Darn right, you better be careful. Hurry up. First one who makes a false move will get a bullet. Hurry it up, Sam. We got to get out of here. Right. You better right. stay right where you are. That holdup had happened in Whitehorse. Then the gang moved northward to Selkirk, where Logan led them in a raid on the bank. The teller looked up as Dave Logan spoke in a calm drawl. Howdy, mister. How about shoving out that cash you got lying there? <laughs> well, a lot of men at the Selkirk Mining Company would go without their pay today if I did, mister. <coughs> what is it you do want? I just told you. Pass out that cash uh, we... and be quick about it. This will hold up. Uh, look here, you can't... You glance around, you'll see four men holding guns on the others in here. Now, shove over that cash. Yeah, sure, sure. That's more like it. Now, just drop it all in this bag. Yeah, that does it. All right, let's go, fellas. After the robbery, Dave Logan led his men away from town, heading for the river. Oh, oh, oh. Easy now, easy. Easy now. Come on. When they reached the river, the outlaws rode along in the shallow water for some distance until Dave called a halt. Now, wait. This is as far as we go. Hold there. Hold, 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 hold. What's the idea, Dave? What do you mean, this is as far as we go? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know, too. I mean just what I said to you, Savvy. This is as far as we go. For Pete's sake, you said that before. You can't just stay here in the middle of the stream. You loco or something? <laughs> now, take it easy, Sam. You might change my good humor. Look, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going back to town. Back to Selkirk? Holy cow, you are local. Hey, uh, the constable's probably already on our trail, Dave. You must think I'm dumb. Of course the constable's hunting for us, but now. If I really said what I thought, you sure wouldn't like it. You keep your mouth shut, Sam, or I'll shut it for you. Okay, okay. That luck of yours isn't going to last forever. And when it runs out, we're right along with you to get the result. I don't know why you say you want to head back to town after we came this far to get away. But if you got some plan in mind, why don't you tell us and stop all this yapping? Yeah, what's on your mind? My plan is so simple, even a fool like you, Sam, can understand it. Now, listen to me. We turn around and ride back in the water past the point where we enter the river. Yeah, but if the constable has a plan. They haven't had time to get as far as the river yet. We can get back long before they arrive there. Then we'll head back to the hotel in town. There's a branch of the stream that runs almost behind the hotel, so we won't leave a trail. You mean actually hide out at the hotel right in town? Yeah. Nobody knows what you fellas look like. Well, you can walk around and talk to the folks about the big rock. <laughs> Say, Dave, that's your good scheme. And I, for one, think it'll work out all right. Uh, yeah, Dave, I take back all I said a minute ago. <laughs> you imagine us being right there in town while the law hunts for us all over the territory. Yeah. <laughs> I get sort of a kick thinking about it myself, Sam. <laughs> Don't you worry. 
Logan Luck still holds out. Let's get going back to town now. Right. Get up! Get up! Come on! Get up, get up, sir. Later, at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City, the inspector was talking to Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, I sent for you because an outlaw gang headed by a man named Dave Logan is terrorizing the people in the vicinity of Selkirk. Dave Logan, eh? I've read some reports about him. Yes, Sergeant, we received several reports about him recently. He operated with his gang in Whitehorse for a while. Now they've hit Selkirk. Our men down there haven't been able to find the gang's hideout. You want me to go down there, Inspector? Yes. Now, I suggest that you take King with you and leave as soon as possible. All right, sir. The boat leaving in the morning will be on it. Good. I know it's asking a lot, Sergeant, but get Dave Logan. That gang must be broken. We'll do our best, won't we, King? Goodbye and good luck. Thank you, sir. Come on. <coughs> when Sergeant Preston and King finally arrived at Selkirk, they went immediately to the constable's office. Hello, Jim. Sergeant Preston. King, I'm sure glad to see you two. What's new on the Logan gang, Jim? Well, they robbed a prospector and burned down his cabin two nights ago, Sergeant. No one around here feels safe with that gang roaming around. You haven't been able to get a line on them? I picked up their trail after they robbed the bank not long ago, but I lost it at the river. Oh. That trail from the burned cabin led right back into town where I lost it again. I see. I read the reports on Logan... He thinks he's able to get away with almost anything because of what he calls Logan's luck. Oh, yeah. Some sort of a lucky piece that Logan carries gives him a feeling of security. But sooner or later, that superstitious nature of his will be his downfall. The sooner he and his gang are caught, the better I'll feel about it. We'll do all we can. I'd like to have you take me to the place along the river where you lost the trail, Jim. Uh, do you think King might be able to pick up the trail from there? No, the trail's too cold and King has nothing to go on. But it won't do any harm to look around over there anyway. All right. Let's go right now. Come along, King. When the two Mounties and King arrived at the river bank, they stopped to look around. Oh, buggy, hold on. King's wondering what we want him to do. Well, just what are we going to do? We'll follow the river bank south for a short distance, and then we'll cross and come back along the other side. Maybe we might find something. Get up, Luggy. Come Get on. <laughs> Meantime, Sam, one of Logan's men, entered a back room on the ground floor of the hotel in Selkirk. Hey, Dave, I got news. Yeah? What's the news, Sam? Sergeant Preston and Monty we heard so much about arrived in town today. Him and the constable rode out toward the river a while ago. Trying to pick up our trail, huh? Ha, <laughs> ha. Ah, they don't know we doubled back in the water and followed the river here to town. Yeah, but they might get wise, Dave. Ah, they wouldn't think for a minute that we'd be holed up here at the hotel. Nobody's got to look at me, because I keep out of sight here in my room. Look, Dave, I, I was talking to the others. We think we ought to get out of here and head for someplace safer. You tell the others to leave things to me. Look, as long as I got this plug silver dollar, my luck will hold out so you stop worrying yeah, I never did hear the story about that plug silver dollar you carry, Dave. It's how come it got to mean so much to you. Sit down a minute. I'll tell you about it, Sam. <coughs> All right, go ahead. I'm listening. When I was way down in the southwest back in the States two years ago, I took over a gang from an armory named Red Elmore while he was doing a short stretch in the pokey. Well, one day I was in a cafe in a junky yeah. little bird called Pitville or, uh, or something like that. Anyway... One of the gang came in and busted over to my table all excited. Dave. Hey, Dave. Well, what's he here? What you so excited about? It's Red. Red Elmore. He's out of jail and heading for here. I'll come ahead and tell you. <laughs> so Red Elmore's heading here, huh? Reckon he's hoping to find that gang of his and take up where he left off. But he's got another thought coming. This is my gang now. But you don't save it, Abe. Huh? Red knows you took the gang and he swore to gun you down. See what? Hey, now, that's different. I I expected him to be sore at the gang. I, well, I didn't think he'd come gunning for me. Well, that's what he's doing. He says he's going to put a slug in your heart right in front of everybody. That is, unless you hightail it before he arrives. No. No, I couldn't do that. If you did, you'd never have a gang again. Now, look, Red will be here most any minute. Better get outside and meet him in the street where you'll have a chance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. But uh, from what I know, Red's an expert gunslinger. He sure is. Fact is, the gang are betting that Red will be the leader again. 
I see you're already a dead duck. Huh? Oh, they do, do they? Well, I'm not dead yet. Now go out now and wait for Red in the street. Hey, wait. This must be your silver dollar. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. All right, let's go outside. That hombre was supposed to be such a good shot. How come you here to tell me about it, Dave? Well, now, that's where my luck comes in. You see, I stepped out of that cafe and found people already lying in the streets. That's how fast the word got around. Well, I can tell you I wasn't feeling any too good. Seemed like everybody took it for granted that I was headed for Boot Hill. <laughs> I remember a woman and a kid that were standing on the sidelines as I walked past. Hey, Mom. Is that the man that's going to get killed? Is it, Mom? Quiet, Johnny. You want him to hear you? I heard the button. I heard every word he said. <laughs> he's just a child. Eh? He don't know what he's talking about, mister. Oh, I do too, Mom. Pop says Red Elmer is going to pull a bullet in Dave Logan's heart. Just like he did lots of others. I heard Pop say that on him. Your old man's just shooting off his mouth, kid. He don't know what he's talking about. Oh, it does, too. And he already went over to the livery stable. Well, went to the livery stable? What for? Johnny, you just keep quiet. Here. Now, now, let him talk. I want to know why his old man went to the livery stable. And what's that got to do with me? My pop's the undertaker, that's right. What? And he went to get the hurt so as to take you away when you get shot. Uh, look, mister, don't you pay no attention. Just don't listen, Johnny. You just would like... You see, Sam, that's the way it was. Even the undertaker was getting ready. Well, what happened? I walked out into the street. And then I saw Red coming toward me, walking real slow-like. We both had our shooting irons holstered, and I knew when we got close enough, Red had moved like lightning and plugged me for sure. Gosh, he, he must have been plenty nervous. Well, I was, and it happened just like I said. He drew fast and he shot. And missed? No. No, he didn't miss exactly. But you see, I'd slipped that silver dollar into my breast pocket. It deflected the bullet into my shoulder. And I had a chance to finish off Red Elmore. <laughs> well, sir, I've carried that silver dollar ever since. That's my luck charm. That's why I think we're safe here at the hotel. Now, listen, Dave, maybe that silver dollar has brought you luck. But I don't go for that sort of stuff. You're too superstitious. Ah, shut up. I know what I'm doing. But the others are getting restless, Dave, and so am I. Huh? Oh. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, all of you, we leave town after supper time. Go to a shack I know of back in the hills. Hide out there for a while. Meet me out back with the horse about seven. All right. That's more like it. I'll go tell the others, Dave. Sergeant Preston and the constable rode some distance south along the river. Then crossing over, they rode back along the opposite bank. The river trail led past a cabin where they stopped to ask questions. Oh, Maggie. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Come along, King. You think this could be where they're staying? I doubt it, Jim. Oh, Mom. Is there something wrong? Good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Preston. We'd like to ask a few questions. Oh, I'm Mrs. Perry. Won't you come in? Thank you, Mrs. Perry. Oh, 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 oh. Well, you've all hurt you. His name's King. This is my son, Tommy. My husband bought this claim about a month ago. He's out panning for gold right now. I see. We stopped by, Mrs. Perry, to ask if you've seen several men on horses going this way. We're trailing an outlaw gang. Oh, uh, well, no. Very few people use the trail on this side of the river, Sergeant. Someday Dad's going to find a lot of gold, Sergeant. I hope he does, Tommy. I have a dollar. Want to see it? <laughs> Why, oh, Tommy, uh... don't bother, Sergeant Preston. It's a plugged silver dollar my husband gave Tommy when we were in Whitehorse. Yeah. If my dollar didn't have a hole in it, I'd buy something at the store to play with. Tell you what, Tommy. If you want me to, I'll give you a good silver dollar for your plug one. Oh, golly. Will you honest? Sergeant, you shouldn't. I'd be. like to, if you don't mind. Here, Tommy. Oh, gee. Here's the plug one. Thanks, Sergeant. <laughs> we'll move along now, Mrs. Perry. If you should catch sight of several horsemen up this way, let us know, will you? Yes, of course. What? Come along, King. After they left the cabin and were riding the trail toward town, the constable asked, uh, Why did you want that plugged silver dollar? I heard that was a type of luck piece that Logan carries, Jim. Huh. I had the same thing. 
Do you think that dollar the boy had is the same one Logan carried? No, but I thought it might come in handy if we meet Logan and his gang. He's a very superstitious man. If he thought I had his lucky piece... Uh, I see what you mean. We'll get back to town and try to get a line on Logan. Let's hurry. Get up, Logan. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Following Logan's plan, his gang met behind the hotel that evening, and they rode to the river. Soon they were riding along the same trail that Sergeant Preston and the constable had taken when they returned to town. Hey, I just thought of something, Dave. Yeah, what's that? We haven't got any supplies. Well, I'll be so That's right. Well, what are we going to do about it? That money is down. It's risky for any of us to go back to the store. Yeah, that's right. That's right, all right. But look, to get to the shack that I told you about, we take a branch trail a short distance down the river. When we reach that branch trail, you and the others wait there in the woods for me. Where are you going? There's a cabin not far along the river from there. A fellow named Perry bought a new claim there not long ago. Pete told me about it. Yeah, that's right. I saw Perry in the store buying a lot of supplies. I asked about him, thinking he might be a prospector with a lot of gold. Well, what would you find out about it? Well, the storekeeper said Perry spent practically all he had for the claim. Came here with a wife and kid. What's your idea in going to the cabin, Dave? Hold them up for supplies, it'll be risky with person, suppose. Ah, don't worry. I'll smooth talk them into selling me some supplies. For, for, for once, I'll really pay for something. <laughs> ah, they won't expect the thing. Yeah, I guess that'll work all right. We'll wait for you along that branch trail there. Yeah, as soon as I get the supplies, I'll come back there and join you. Then we'll head for that shack. Right. Get up! Get up. Get up. Get up. When the gang reached the branch trail, the others stopped in a grove of trees to wait while Dave Logan rode on to the Perry cabin. Within a short time, he stopped outside the cabin. Oh, oh, there. Good evening. What can I do for you? Howdy, mister. I have a claim not far inland from here. My wife is sick, and I don't want to take time to go into town. I, I wonder if you could sell me a few supplies. Why, sure. And so, I can go to town and get more in the morning. Come in, mister. Well, thank you. Mary? Yes? This fella has a sick wife and wants to buy some of our supplies. Oh, of course. We can let you have some coffee, and some sugar, and some condensed milk, and well, some fresh bread, I bake. Sure, and you can have bacon. We have... Well, that's fine. Fine. I'll get the things together for you. If you think maybe my wife could help out over there... Oh, no, can... no, no. There'll be no need of that. Thank you. We'll get along all right. I have a dollar, mister, on my own... It's a good one, too. Well, that's fine, Sonny, fine. I'll go to the store in town with Dad tomorrow and spend it. You said I could, didn't you, Dad? Yes, Tommy, yes. Now, don't bother the man. I have the things ready back here on the table. Well, that's enough to see us through for a short time, I reckon. How much I owe you? Well, I'd say about $10 dollars will cover what's there, mister. And that's fair enough, sir. There we are. Look, that silver dollar. It's got a hole Be in it. Be quiet, like... Tommy. Oh, that plug one, though. Oh, I'll take that back. <laughs> Here, here's a good one. But Dad, Tommy, what? I said be quiet. Well, I'll be getting along now. Thanks for what you did. I'll be seeing you again sometime. The following morning, Perry and his son Tommy went to the store in town. Oh, look, there's Sergeant Preston and King. Good morning, Tommy. You come to spend your dollar? Uh-huh. I'm Hank Perry, Sergeant, Tommy's father. Mary told me you were at the cabin yesterday. That's right, I was. Uh, what do you want, Hank? Don't tell me you run out of supplies already. <laughs> no, not exactly. A uh, man stopped by last night and bought some of our supplies. Said his wife was sick and he didn't want to take time to come all the way to town. Huh? I wonder who that could have been. Did he say? No, he didn't say and I didn't ask him. Oh. But he paid me so I came in for more stuff. You know what, Sergeant? What? He had that plug silver dollar you got for me. Huh? I saw it, but he took it back real quick. <laughs> there are other plug silver dollars, Tommy. Just a minute, Hank. What did that man look like? Why, he was a big man, sort of rough-looking. Heavy black hair and bushy eyebrows, maybe? Yes, that's right. You know who he is, then? I have an idea. Tommy, if things turn out the way I hope they will, you may be the one in your family to strike it rich. Come along, King. <laughs> A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston entered the constable's office. Jim, I think I have a line on Dave Logan at last. Say, hey, that's quick work. Our visit to Perry's cabin's paying off. What do you mean? Did they see the gang? I'll tell you about left? it as we ride. Let's get our horses and head out to the Perry place right now. Come on, King. <laughs> so 
The two Maltese didn't take long in reaching Perry's place. Mary came out as they rode up and stopped. Hold buggy, hold. Oh, oh. Well, Sergeant, I didn't expect you back so soon. Tommy and his father went to town. Yes, I know. We met them at the store. We're interested in that man who bought supplies from you last night, Mrs. Perry. Oh, well, he said he had a sick wife. I really should have insisted upon going with I him to I doubt see. his story. We're going to pick up his trail and see where he went from here. Well, last night he left his horse right over there near that tree. Oh, good. Here, King. Here, boy. <laughs> Sergeant Preston walked to where Dave had left his horse. He found hoof prints in the soft earth. Pointing to the hoof marks, Preston spoke to the great dog, Yukon King. Find him, fella. Follow the trail, King. <laughs> So you know there, Mrs. Perry? Steady. Come on, Come on. In a shack in the hills, Dave and his men were lounging about, waiting for his next move. Dave was saying... These supplies will last us another day or so, and then we'll have to get more or move on. Well, I'm for moving on anyway, Dave. I don't like having that Sergeant Preston so near. He's got a reputation for getting the ones he goes at. Yeah, Sam's right, Dave. We've been lucky so far, but it's crazy to push our luck too far. Oh, shut up. I know what I'm doing. You're having luck because you're stringing along with me. There's no reason to believe that Logan's luck is going to run out. Yeah, but we can't waste our time laying around this shack. We'll lay around this shack till I say we move. You understand? Yeah, sure, sure. No need to get sore about it. Yeah, but what if that money and a constable pick up our trail? How are they going to know our trail from anybody else? There's lots of people hitch their horses behind that hotel in town. Lots of people ride the trail. Yeah, I guess Dave was right as usual. Yeah, he brought us through this far. Look, if we lay low that money or think we have moved on, then he'll leave town. Yeah, but what about those Perrys? If they got suspicious and started talking around About town, what? About a prospector who came asking polite like for them to sell him a few supplies? Why, that kind of thing happens often up here in the Yukon. Folks don't think anything of it. Well, there's no use worrying, Sam. Dave's got all the answers. Well, doggone right I have. You just rest easy and stop the gabbing. Don't get us any place. Meantime, Sergeant Preston and the constable followed Dave's trail back to where he met the others on the branch trail. They stopped for a moment. Hold buggy. Easy, fella. Right there, Jim. Hoof marks of several horses. Uh, looks like the gang waited here until Logan got the supplies. Yes, and then they rode along the branch trail. From here on, it should be easy to follow their tracks to wherever they're hiding out. Yeah, but we'll be only two against four or five, Sergeant. I realize that, but they have King with us. If we take them by surprise, we ought to make it. That's right. It's worth taking the risk. I knew you'd feel that way. Let's get moving. Get up, Blackie. Get up there. When the two Mounties came within sight of the shack, they stopped in a grove of trees nearby and dismounted. Oh, Blackie. Oh, Blackie. There's a shack, Jim. Smoke coming from the chimney. They must be there. Yeah. Now, now what do we do? Quiet, Jim. Quiet, boy. We'll go forward on foot. If we keep to the woods, we can reach the shack without being seen. All right. I'm ready. You make for the back of the shack. I'll get around to the front. King will go with me. Let's go. Come on, King. Inside the shack, the gang sat around the table playing cards to pass away the time. Hey. Ha <laughs> ha, that did it. I won again. Ah, uh, with your luck, Dave, we can't beat you. Sure. Logan's luck still holds. That's why we don't have to worry about those Mounties. I wouldn't count on hey, the luck of yours. What the? Hey, Preston, he sneaked in. I'll plug him fire. Oh, my leg. As Sergeant Preston fired at the outlaw who had tried to shoot him, Dave Logan sprang to one side behind the heavy cast iron stove, at the same time drawing his gun. Hold it, Marty. Now I got you covered. Drop your gun. Drop it. Let him have it, Dave. Oh, we'll take him alive. Just in case he brought others, we can use him as a hostage. <laughs> My luck is still holding out, Monty. No, it isn't. Look at this. What? Preston dropped the plugged silver oh. dollar on the floor in front of him as he spoke. Dave Logan, not realizing it wasn't his, cried out. Uh, that's my luck piece. Get it, Sam, get it. Now make him drop his gun first. Drop that gun, Monty. All right. After Preston dropped his gun, all eyes watched Sam as he moved forward to pick up the silver Hurry dollar. Up, pick it up, Sam. Meantime, the great dog, Yukon King, standing behind Preston in the shadows, saw his master raise his hands. King looked from Dave to Preston, then realizing Preston was in danger, decided the time had come to act. Moving like a shadow along the wall of the cabin, the intelligent dog crept forward toward Dave Logan, who was behind the stove. I guess it's safe enough now to get that lucky coin. Just as King reached a spot alongside the stove and behind Dave, Sam bent over to pick up the coin. 
King saw his master make a sudden dive towards Sam. He'll make a good hey. shield. Dave Logan's gun was raised at Preston. He was just about to fire as the Monty leaped at Sam. Then King charged. Sergeant Preston, realizing that King had Logan occupied, slammed a fist to the jaw of the stooping Sam. This will do it. As Sam fell, Preston quickly picked up his own gun and grabbed Sam's. Then he started over to where King was guarding Dave Logan. Good work, King. Good work, boy. Uh, get away, Hal. Get this dog. On your feet, Logan. Rush this Monty. Fellas, get him. Here we are, all of you. And drop your guns. Why? The remaining two outlaws, seeing the constable behind them in the doorway of the back room, realized the game was up and dropped their guns. King, easy, fella. Get their guns, Jim. Oh, sure. Ah, it was because of that luck piece. I must have lost it and you found it someplace. If I'd have had you that, you'd still have... have your plug coin, Logan. But this should prove to you that it doesn't help you. I have all the guns. Good. We'll get them back to town now, Constable. Logan, I arrest you and your gang in the name of the Crown for robbery and murder. Let's get going. That afternoon, Sergeant Preston and the Constable returned to the Perry cabin after putting the Logan gang behind bars. The sergeant was talking to Tommy Perry. Tommy, there's a reward for the information leading to the capture of the Logan gang. It's through you that we finally caught up with him. You mean Tommy will get a reward? Oh, I'm sure he will, Mrs. Perry. I'm putting in his name. Oh, golly. Dave Logan was superstitious enough to believe that a certain plugged silver dollar brought him luck. When he thought he didn't have it, he lost his courage. But if there's any such thing as luck, Tommy, your plug coin brought it to you. But I don't believe in luck. Oh, I don't either. Good for you. You make your own luck in this world, Tommy. I've told Tommy that, Sergeant. I don't want him to be superstitious. Well, I'm sure he won't be. But because Dave Logan was, he's going to hang. And this case is closed. We now take you to Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant, I did. As you know, little Joey Clayton inherited a valuable gold mine. Now a man has come forward who claims to be Joey's lost father, Bert Clayton. You say claims to be. Does that mean you suspect him of being an imposter? Well, there seems to be no reason to doubt his identity, Sergeant. But as Joey's parent, he stands to gain control of the mine. So we'd better investigate him thoroughly. I'm assigning you to the job. Very well, sir. I'll get busy right away. Come on, King. Is the man who claims to be Bert Clayton really Joey's father? Or is he masquerading under a false identity to gain control of a rich gold mine? If so, he will undoubtedly resort to desperate measures to keep Sergeant Preston from exposing him. He may even plot the sergeant's death. Be sure to listen to this next exciting adventure, Cal Dorset's Heir. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you once each week until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is Fred Foy wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next broadcast.